And now production looking to us, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to game number one of day number two. Lucifron up against Vortex. This is the first game in the series. We've got Vortex spawning in, playing as the Rus. He's and gonna, he's going to yep. be on the north side of the map here nearly. He's got a pretty decent spawn. Mm -hmm. Nice forest close to him. Okay, Barry's at the front. Already found quite some sheep. As we can see, the Roost player opening with three scouts here. One from the stable, one from the hunting cabin. And will find quite a bit for himself. Hunting cabin there with 19 gold. On the other side we have in the red trunks the player playing the French Lucifron. Now, yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing the transition period, as you mentioned. There's, it's highly likely we're going to see professional scouts here. Players love to make scouts on this map. The more scouts that you've got, the more capable you are to take down those wolves, the more capable you are to collect the sheep. And there's just so many wolves that spawn on this map, so it makes a lot of sense to get lots of scouts. And with lots of scouts, it just makes sense to get professional scouts. Mm -hmm. So we'll be looking out for those two. I really, like, Drongo, can you give me a tip? Every time I play professional scouts on Highview, I kill those deer in those stealth forest, mm -hmm. and I struggle so much in clicking them and collecting them. Okay. Here's the tip. You want a drag box. So you do a big box over the stealth forest yeah. and it will tell you how many deer are in there and then you can actually do a smaller box and then a smaller and you can eventually locate where it is. It's very hard. Also, rotating the camera seems to work really well. Okay. But yeah. aren't you selecting the trees then? No, if there are deer, it will prioritize the deer over the, over the trees. Yeah. That was, I actually took a real big risk here mm. because this could have easily been like, I'm asking you something and you had no idea. No, I know. But damn, you are, you are knowledgeable. We should probably write that down. That's something that we could bring up. You know, I think it was at AOE2 that's got the mods where you can uh, have borders for the fish. Maybe we need to get some user-generated content for borders for the deer stuck in stealth forests. Maybe, maybe. Spring patch potentially around the corner and maybe something to have as an option there. The modding chances here. Obviously, Golden Gate as an option from our Roost player wants to get those efficient trading rates. That wolf, will it actually follow to the town center? Feels very far away. Yeah, it's very, very close to that leash edge. You've got to be careful with these wolves because they do run a little bit slower than the scouts and you can see the way he's curving it around trying to get it into the stealth forest. But uh, new age has now begun. So uh, I, I do apologize if we do get the civilizations wrong in this game. Just because we've got Lucifron, who's playing the French with the blue flag, but he's actually on the color red. And Vortex, who's in the color blue, mm -hmm. playing the Rus with the red flag. And they're on the opposite sides of the screens as well. So we'll, we'll try our best not to, uh, to mess it up. But we see a knight oh. coming out already. Oh, and the Townsend actually focused down the scout instead of the wolf. Interesting shot there. And yeah, we have the first r Royal Knight coming out here from our French player on the other side. Professional scouts from the rules. No surprise. Yeah, so looking a little bit like a... Geez, this is about a meta that we saw about six weeks ago, isn't it? Just this old classic professional scouts. Uh, I'm curious to see the Rus base and whether we've got any potential stables coming up. It looks like a barracks opening is going to be happening here, so... Obviously, he'll be expecting that there's knights coming out, so looking to just f neutralize those before they do any real damage. Mm -hmm. Yeah, let's see about that. As we all know, deer is what our Roost player is aiming for. Right hand side, all those deer. And did we just switch everything there at the top? Uh, what is now at the right? In? No, we, but we didn't switch player camps. Okay, overlay guy is raising his hand. Yeah, we tried something. <laughs> Nearly, I'm sorry. Uh, I thought like that was beautiful. Yeah, for a small moment. <laughs> for a small moment. We now see that knight coming in. Now keep in mind, one of the most recent updates is that scouts move slower with professional scouts. You can see how slow these guys move in. But uh, the knight just ignoring them, realizing he's probably not going to be able to kill one of these scouts before it gets back to the town center. So he's not going to bother. He's not going to waste his time. But now professional scouts also coming in for our French player as well. Uh, so both players looking to pick up professional scouts here. And uh, yeah, now we've got uh, Vortex, who is... Uh, Actually, I'm, I'm getting a little bit confused. <laughs> Vortex, okay, there we go. Vortex on the Rus. Vortex actually going to be catching a knight here. Gets a nice little bit of DPS onto the knight. But uh, keep in mind, it's a French knight. It's a royal knight. It's just going to heal back up. Yeah, if we get chivalry, that's the big question mark there. We also have professional scouts for our French player, Lucifron, now on the way. Also wanted to add a blacksmith, but cancelled it. A bit surprising to me. 
Yeah, now ah, just repositioned. Yeah, repositioned. There we go. Nice and safe behind the base. Interesting to see that it's behind the base. Normally, because the blacksmith's a bit bigger, kind of just put it towards the front of the base. It's a, it's fine to soak up that damage from the battering ram if it inevitably comes in. But uh, now we see the scouts making their way back to the town center. Knights trying their best to look for a pick, but no success just yet, nearly. Okay, professional scout is continuing. More spearmen in the queue here for Vortex. Tries to play this one really defensively. Feels like he doesn't really want to move out too much. And soon, if we get like three, four archers on the map, French can put on some pressure. Yeah, I mean, up until this point, I feel like Vortex is definitely playing this very well. Uh, everything seems to be, you know, par for the course at this stage. He hasn't lost any villagers, hasn't lost any scouts. He's only just made a handful of spears, so he's he may be looking to get up to the next stage. I'd be curious to see. Ooh. That might have been close. Is that a second town center coming down from him? So we're, we're seeing a little bit of a, a shift away from the trend. We used to see this fast castle coming out from a lot of the Rus players, but now adding a second town center immediately. This is quite early. Yeah, very untypical what, or atypical here, I would think. Simply because friend, uh, Roos, if we think about them, they normally try to go to Castle Age that quickly. We like to see a horse archer from them. But that's not really the meta anymore. Second town center, obviously really cheap, right? You invest 200 gold to get to the 300 stone. Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, it's an amazing advantage as well because going up against the French, they're going to have those faster villagers coming out. You can already see Lucifron beginning to build up quite a, a nice little villager lead despite not even killing a villager of his enemy, and that's just simply because he's ooh, French. Ooh, ooh, but look at the overlay, look at what's in the queue. Siege Engineers for Lucifron. He wants to put on the pressure, also goes for Chivalry. This could be a big play in Fuel Age from our French player. Yeah, he's looking towards that 300 wood as well, so stacking it up, and uh, he's going to be able to put on a lot of pressure here. I think uh -oh, he's going to uh -oh. find some timing windows, but yeah, unfortunate Knights going down right there, not paying attention. I don't, he's got Chivalry in on the way, so that's an unfortunate loss right ahead of that fight. Aye, aye, aye. And that one took so much damage. Now will take some time to fully heal up. Indeed, now we have the 300 wood. You don't really want to build it too far away, though. Oh, yeah, built it in the stealth forest. And then some pressure. Where should he pressure towards? Is it the second town center? It's definitely the second town center. And looking at that second town center there for Vortex, it makes me a little bit concerned for him because it's not behind the town center. It is... It's almost to the front of it in a way, uh, and this battering ram is going to be able to come in. Ideally, what Vortex is going to be, or what Lucifer is going to be looking for, is having enough archers to one shot a villager, and then he's going to be able to trade out villagers for that battering ram. That's ideally what he wants. So if he can look to secure about seven or eight villager kills, he's going to be really happy, and it's going to take time for Vortex to make up those differences. Okay, the question is, will he really get there? Because how many knights do we have? Like two right now, not the highest HP. That means the horsemen are becoming really efficient against the ram and the archers. Yeah, this is quite a, an interesting position here, considering that Vortex is not going for knights. He's going for horsemen. So he's really looking to out-micro his brother in this situation because the horsemen get that extra bonus damage against the ranged units. So he's really going to have to make sure he focuses down each individual archer it's going to be impressive when it comes to Micro here. He's going to have to have really good control moving into this fight. Let's take a look how he wants to maneuver this one. Maybe some Spearmen. And look at that. Lucifer now even adding Spearmen. Goes for the Fuel Age upgrade. Goes for Villager Snipe. Can't even find the kill. Now tries to snipe down the Spearmen. That's a lot of Spearmen that are coming in there. Nearly going to be more than capable of forcing back those Knights. And a little bit of a loop-de-loop -loop happening there. One of the Knights going down. Second one might potentially be going down as well. And you can see the, the Spears just getting in on top of the Archers. It's going to be an absolute cleanup in R3 right now. Oh, it looks so good. Spearman running away, trying to deal with the ram because the horsemen are doing the job. The knights went down behind the scenes. Even scouts picking up more professional or like more deer carcasses. Archer numbers really low now. Beautiful defense by Vortex. Yeah, the barracks coming in a little bit too late here, unfortunately, for Lucifron. And I think it's such a smart move. I think a lot of lesser players in this position would have gone for the knight. You've got it available to you, so why wouldn't you go for it? Well, there's a whole bunch of reasons why you wouldn't go for it, and we see right there why you uh, you go for the horseman. Vortex demonstrating amazing micro and just completely outnumbers his brother. So
Yeah, so sweet indeed. Now has a reasonable gold income Vortex, so maybe could also go for some knights if he wanted to add them in, but Horseman just so efficient against all those archers, only two spearmen there, and Vortex takes another big fight. Oh, it feels like Lucifer needs to run. Yeah, definitely feels like that, and look how close the ram is to coming up at this point. He's going to be having to cancel that one. All these archers getting cleaned up. I don't think this is going to be pretty right now for Lucifer. He's getting completely cleaned up here, Millie. Oh yeah, and if it was one was one to see, that could have been fair. But look at that! The French player has to tear about sick defense by the Rus. Really impressive stuff. He did that with two town centers as well. So mm. in investing a lot of resources into that second town center, and yet still manages to hold. And it looked overwhelming. Mm. If that was even even having just one town center in that situation, he looked like he completely overwhelmed him and would have been capable of pushing into the French base there. <sighs> Just felt like he lost too many knights early on. The one shortly before Chivalry, then very low HP. It felt like three more knights and the fight could have been way more in his favor. But still, maybe spearmen too late as well. Maybe go for the barracks and then siege engineers if you know that your opponent has such an easy switch into horsemen. Yeah, it's a really difficult thing to know, but mm -hmm. uh, it, it definitely felt like there were a lot of units that were coming out there for Vortex. I, I was impressed to see how many units he had. I, I'd be curious to know at the end of that uh, game how much production he had, because it just felt like there were so many units out on mm -hmm. the field. So really well played from him. And I think we probably saw a very efficient use of his Golden Gate. Uh, mm -hmm. His Golden Gate? Yeah, yeah. the Rus yeah. Golden Gate. Yeah, because obviously buys the stone, but then what else is he doing with it? He's probably just trading resources behind mm -hmm. the scenes and it's, it's pumping up, up his production. Yeah, maybe getting some extra food for those horsemen could have been an option. Also, something I want to address is that scouting in this situation for the French isn't that super easy, right? You have two TCs kind of protecting scouting area, yep. plus he used the scouts to get the carcasses himself. Mm with the professional scouts. Therefore, he didn't really know, okay, what is my opponent trying to go for? Is he trying to defend with Archer Spearman? Is he going for that mass horseman that we in the end saw? And I think that was information he needed to maybe adjust his push a bit and maybe see, okay, wow, mass horseman, okay, I need more Spearman. Yeah, it was interesting that he went for that because normally there's a couple of different options that you can go for, whether you look to go for a fast castle, whether you look to go for a battering ram timing push like he did. Uh, but yeah, unfortunately in that situation, it seemed like there was just so much production coming out of the Rus player. So that was a very crisp build order from Vortex. And I wouldn't be surprised if we see some videos documenting that because it looked very safe. He looked almost unstoppable in that position. Yeah. Uh, I, I'm, I'm impressed how, how clean the Roos played. And we even discussed that Roos are a questionable pick, right? They kind yep. of fell off. So many people now knowing how to play against the Roos. Mm. But I think it actually like was not really a strategic mistake. It came down a lot to like those two night losses. Like They, they are so costly this early in the game. I'd also love to hear what a bit uh, what the pro players think of it as well. Speaking with a couple yesterday, they uh, they were of the opinion the only sieve capable of doing an early second town center is the Abbasid dynasty, mm -hmm. and yet here we see the Rus pulling it off very effectively. So mm. perhaps we see a, a trend or a shift in the meta moving to a more greedy opening style. Hmm. Yeah, that's interesting, right? Yeah, I heard the same, but mm. we were proven wrong, and maybe whoever sat on the couch yesterday was proven wrong as well, because this looked. Quite interesting. Or maybe we have to ask them again and how the French players sort of approached this one. Because I don't mind an all-in against this. You should have the army advantage. You should. And that's exactly it. You should have the army advantage. But I guess the Rus have got a lot of potential in the fact that the Golden Gate's just going to be pumping out extra resources for mm -hmm. them as well. So whilst there was that villager difference, there's always the Golden Gate behind it. Mm -hmm. Also question from the French player, did we really need that blacksmith? Couldn't that have been a, an earlier barracks? Because in that big fight, if we have another four extra spearmen... It did come early, didn't it, that blacksmith? Yeah. yeah. And, like, I, I'm, I'm, it's still... I think people didn't really do the math yet, what upgrades are, how good. But it feels like plus one attack for a royal knight, percentage-wise, is not changing a lot. Mm. Yeah, really doesn't do much, does it? It's, uh, yeah, there, there's not a lot of thresholds that it changes, but... Uh, We've got the, the next map for you guys. We'll take a look and see what we've got. Actually, we'll, we'll just head straight into the game, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to game number two of Lucifron versus Vortex. Spawning on the uh, east side of the map in the color blue, playing as the French, we've got Vortex. On the opposite side of the map, Nilly, who do we have down there? 
In the red, we have Lucifron, his brother trailing 1-0, playing as the Holy Roman Empire. As we can see, Prelate already running towards the gold. Quite interesting, has defensive berries, woodline and gold at the front. I think if we go for Aachen Chapel, it would need to be more at the top. So I wouldn't mind to see sheep mainly killed at the top of your city, his CC. Oh, and look at that, already adjusting. Yeah, nearly he's listening. Don't, I, I love it when that happens. I, I remember... Uh, I feel so smart. Yeah, I love it as well. Uh, I, I, I've recently got this tool for my own stream where I can draw on the screen and erase it. Mm -hmm. And I was watching a game that Kapok was playing, mm -hmm. Kapoch. So, uh, and uh, I drew somewhere. I said, he needs to wall right here. Mm -hmm. And he put down a wall immediately. Nice. Like, wow. It's it's beautiful when they listen to you, the players, because yeah, as casters, we are we're we experienced. Feel, we feel situation. appreciated. Yes. Yeah, we are, we are experienced in telling what players should do and not <laughs> being able to do it better ourselves. Now, interestingly, this map is Dry Arabia. A lot of people would be tuning into the tournament and wondering, Dry Arabia, game two, what the heck's going on here? So the way that it works is players pick their bands, they pick their home maps, and then the last map that's left, well, that is the starting map. Is that right, Nelly? That's indeed the case. And I always thought, like, now nah, we are going for Arabia as one. But the players came up with that idea, and I like it quite a bit, simply because it gives us some more variety to start off with Hill and Day, Mongo and Heights. Also changes the draft, and I think the system actually reduces the amount of mirror matchups that we're going to see. I think you're 100% right. It's, it's great to see, because as an example, yeah, yeah. had it been Mongolian Heights that was the first map that was drawn, we potentially could have seen a Rus mirror. It mm -hmm. could have been an option. So instead, we get Rus out of the pool. Mongolian Heights is a little bit later, but we're not going to see that Rus mirror on there. So now we've got that School of Cavalry coming down for Vortex right in front of the town center. And I don't know about you, Nilly, but uh, I can smell something being cooked up in the kitchen by our friends at HelloFresh, and that smells absolutely amazing. Fettuccine. <laughs> and speaking of absolutely amazing, look at this Arkham Chapel. Absolutely beautiful. Mm -hmm. With the gold, with the woodland. Not the best Aachen Chapel we have seen in this tournament. Mm. Yesterday we had the crazy one <laughs> yes. from the Muslim who just walked by and had a small smile on his face after we said amazing Aachen Chapel. And yeah, that one is still absolutely beautiful. It's so efficient and you have a really compact base and shouldn't have the toughest task to defend that. Yeah. And now I, I'm curious to to see what type of opening we're going to have here from Lucifer. And obviously, he's on the, the Holy Roman Empire. I would expect that he's probably going to be looking to defend with a couple of spears, try and get up to the castle edge as quickly as possible, ah. look to take out those relics. And we can have a look on the minimap now at how those relics have spawned. You can see that it seems to be relatively balanced. There's three in the, the middle. Uh, we've got... Uh, a couple down towards the bottom side, but they, they, the ones in the middle do tend to be a little bit more favoured up towards Vortex there. But I think overall, a, maybe a 6 out of 10 for Lucifer on here. Uh, yeah, I think Vortex has to be... Wait, 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 wait. Lucifer has to be happy with that. Yeah, yeah. for sure. Especially yeah. the two at the bottom. But yeah, yeah. next to one of those relics, we saw three wolves guarding it, right? <laughs> so maybe if he if he clicks on the mini-map and clicks a bit next to it, he might lose a prelate here. Yeah, yeah. Well, the prelates did get buffed up. Keep that in mind. So maybe they'll have to be hot on their heels and run away. But we've got that age up coming through. The barracks is indeed getting dropped down now. Beautiful spot right around the edge of this wood line. He's going to be able to extend his line of sight out there. Watch out for those royal knights that are going to be coming in inevitably. And now we do see professional scouts actually coming in for Vortex straight away. Mm -hmm. So not even opting for any aggression. This is quite interesting. So uh, if we take a look at the minimap, you can see there is a scout roaming around the south of the base. Uh, so right there. So this is going to spot out that that uh, barracks. And, and he knows that any kind of aggression is just going to get shut down completely. So what's the point in even going for it? He'll just invest in his own economy. Yeah, and he will see how compact the base is, right? Most of the time, if you have the mobility, you think, okay, I will take you left, I will take you right, and you need so many spearmen to defend. But in this case... The base is so compact, you don't even need that many spearmen. And what is that villager up to? Oh, a stable to follow it up to counter potential archers. Yeah, this is a really smart move. And we've been seeing players do this a lot more often. So essentially the, the double melee composition, going for spears, going for horsemen. Very strong against the French. Obviously the French have a very fierce early game with their knights and their archers, but it goes the extra step. And we do indeed see an archery range being dropped down here. 
I'm curious to see whether the scout is going to be picking up the uh, the barracks being dropped down at this point in time, but it doesn't seem like it is. It's a bit more interested in those deer, and this is a consequence of going for professional scouts, nearly, as you mentioned. Yeah, yeah, exactly the same problem that we saw in the game before, potentially, but yeah, Knight goes directly there, so we'll have an idea of the stable himself. And the big question is, like, where is the HRE player going to move towards after his sheep run dry? I think he should have, like, three, four more sheep. Then he has to expand it. That's getting a bit more tricky. Look at that. Very early mill. He's going mass farming after this. Yeah, is that what it's going to be? Is that mill? That, that mill's not on the berries, is yeah. it? So it could potentially see professional scouts coming ooh, out as ooh. well from him. So very interesting to see the way that these two players are playing. Because one of the things that we often talk about is when you are practicing games with a practice partner, you're almost in a bubble and everything outside of it, it doesn't really matter what goes on. It, it matters what's happening inside your games. And so obviously we can see professional scouts really developed quite heavily inside their bubble. So both games, both players going for professional scouts here. Yeah. Uh, like, I would be surprised if they surprise each other in this one. <laughs> they obviously played a lot of practice games against each other. And obviously for the qualifiers, both had to qualify for this tournament. They try hard at Lucifron, actually not making it through, losing to BCQ in the qualifier number one, but then they continue to practice to have Lucifron qualifying as well. Knights are getting away, and therefore you know that they got probably dozens if not over 100 1v1s against each other in yeah. the last two weeks. Yeah, yeah, 100%. And uh, yeah, as you mentioned, I don't think there's any way they're going to be able to hide strategies from each other. As far as I'm aware, these guys live together, so they're practicing together all the time. You wouldn't be able to hide a Smurf account from these guys. <laughs> It'd be terrible. Oh, jeez. But a second archery range going to be coming down now. So instead of opting for a barracks, just goes for that. But uh, Knight's getting a nice little trade there on those horsemen. Keep in mind, the horsemen aren't going to be able to heal up uh, without the assistance of a prelate, but those knights, they're going to be able to do it as long as they've got that chivalry upgrade. Mm -hmm. I don't really see it yet, though. So still has to be happy with the damage he did. And HRE not really taking any damage. Now the big question. Quite some economy boost for French. Cheaper upgrades, which we don't see. And faster town center. On the other side, HRE inspired food and all, like all resource income yeah. with a prelate. Yeah. What he goes better? That's a tough question. I mean, at the time, at this mo moment, there's a five village difference. But when you consider the uh, just the, the strength of that Arkham Chapel, and it's a, it's a good quality one. If I, if I can get my wood line and my gold together with my town center, I'm very happy with that. That's mm -hmm. that's at a bare minimum, that is a, a very good Arkham Chapel. If you can get berries in there or deer in there as well, then it's absolutely perfect. Uh, and he is now bringing back deer with professional scouts. So. I would have to say at this point in time, the Holy Roman Empire player, his economy is looking a little bit stronger than the French, but the French will continue to scale. Yeah, and numbers are supporting your prediction there. If we see HRE player, 300 gold per minute, 700 food per minute, that's more than we see on the French side. And French player really low in resources, the HRE player flirting with Castle Age. Mm, I love flirting with Castle Age. It's almost as fun as uh, being flirting. flirting with Lee Nock. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but uh, now we see a bit of a push coming out. Vortex probably sensing that there could be blood in the water here and uh, that his brother may be up to Castle Age or at least on the way to Castle Age. You can see he's just dropped off all that gold with perfect timing. He's got 37 extra gold on top of that. If this push had come in just even a few seconds earlier nearly, he may have potentially denied Castle Age. And now look at him trying to clean up those scouts. Spearman going to be coming out here. Not enough horsemen like we saw in the last game. Vortex definitely having a bit of an overwhelming army at this point in time. Lucifront going to be falling back towards that town center. More archers coming in and potentially looking to take out some villagers here. We can ah. see the archers just splitting off their fire. Look at all the villagers going down. Wow, quite some losses. 38 against 32 villagers now. As we can see, knights still fighting another villager kill. Those knights can go back, potentially heal. Archers diving in deep. And that's more exposed villagers. That's a beautiful timing. Really, really nice timing here. And now we, we can see that there's a couple of villagers out on that gold mine as well that might be going down here. The knights have got their lances out. And indeed they do. The first one and the second one going to be going down. And that villager lead are really starting to build now. A nine villager lead here for Vortex. Regnus Cathedral is, however, up. Do we hear those, those uh, relics being picked up? I'm listening for them. I don't hear them just yet. I don't hear them either. 
also no real red dots on the minimap, so didn't really have the production. Remember, he's pushed away from that gold. So right now, maybe only one prelate on the field, and then it feels really risky to move out with that one. Yeah, because if you do lose that, then obviously you're not going to be having your Ark and Chapel empowered. But speaking of empowered Ark and Chapel, we can see the empowered forces of uh, the Rus, the Rus, the uh, Holy Roman Empire managing to hold on uh, for the moment. 70 population against 45 roughly here. Trying to find another angle and he knows, wow, if, if I just block your gold, that's really good. But little does he know that we have Lucifron actually on another gold at the bottom there, trying to get onto better numbers. Quite reasonable there, still without a prelate though. And this all comes into that timing. Vortex pushed in. We saw that he managed to get up to the castle age, but obviously didn't have the gold there to get an extra prelate out. Mm -hmm. And it means now he's stuck in this situation where there's still five relics on the map. And he's been in castle age for more than a minute at this point. And ideally, in a perfect world as the Holy Roman Empire, the moment you hit that castle age, you're picking up one relic and two relics at the very least. Mm -hmm. Not to be seen this time, and also something we don't really see is upgrades. Look at that, both the professional scouts, that's kind of it. Plus one attack with the blacksmith for French, he will take that. But also, like, no upgrade for the archers there, I'm a bit surprised by that. Now goes for siege engineers, ooh, next ram. Is it bugging out there? No, that's the second ram, do not fret, they are doing a bit of a ram dance, trying to get in on the action, but not having a lot of luck. There's a couple around there, but we see those beautiful chivalries healing up the uh, the knights, and he's now looking to put on a bit of pressure. So now that he's in age three, Lucifron's army composition, he's going to be looking to obviously get more armored units. We're going to see knights out from him, potentially men at arms here. Nearly, what would your go-to unit be in this situation? Uh, men at arms, obviously you need the barracks before. It kind of is like prey to get enough knights and spearmen out, but the attack is now coming in. Is the ram train going towards the town? center or the Aachen Chapel. I'm a bit surprised, just passing by for now. Actually, goes for the main town center. A bit of a surprise. Yeah, but we now see the, the large army coming out here from Lucifer. You can see he's got quite a few of those knights out as well. Now, keep in mind, these knights, these are castle age knights. These boys don't need to go through any sort of upgrade process to get their status of veterancy. These guys are just stock standard. We can see they're actually trading quite efficiently here because there's no spears at the moment that is out for Vortex. So despite him having a larger military mass, the trades here relatively efficient. There's a fair few knights coming out here for him, though, and that's going to mean that he is repelled in this situation, has to fall back to the town center, but he buys himself time. Uh, but also, villagers were idle, finally gets to that relic, good for him, left the wolves untouched there, military-wise, 26 to 9, now going for the town center again, and forcing quite some idle time. Vortex really putting on the pressure, over 30 population lead. Yeah, he's looking quite strong at this point in time. And keep in mind, he is up 1-0 against his brother. If he wins this game, he goes on to match point. Lucifron potentially loses a second series 3-0, uh -oh. which would be huge for him and would really cement him at the bottom of the table, despite coming into this tournament as probably not the favorite, but definitely one of the top contenders. Yeah, well, that will be the big question, right? The tournament is so stacked, and then it's getting tricky to get a lot of wins against players at least easily. And we can see he's still holding on quite reasonably well. Now a Knight's taking the fight, but it's just back to work. Yeah, it does look like the Knights are going to be able to hold in this position. Now, keep in mind, there's still no Spears in here for Vortex. So despite seeing that his enemy is just making, at this point, complete Knights, he's, uh, he's decided he's going to stick with Archers, stick with Knights. Uh, so an interesting composition coming out of Vortex, but it does look like the Lucifron definitely finding himself a little bit of a window here. So in this in this downtime, he's going to be looking to put the pressure on his enemy, try and get into those wood lines. At the same time behind that, continue picking up the, uh, the deer that are out on the map if there are any left. And of course, secure those relics at the same time, working towards that Imperial Age. Second barracks now being added. That's quite interesting. So Vortex will go to Castle Age. And how are we going for another push then? Obviously, if you go full Spearman and Knight, that could be quite a nice composition. I don't think you need to add too many more archers facing Knights exclusively from the HRE. Yeah, it's still quite curious that now we're only just seeing that second barracks coming in. Second, uh, Speaking of seconds, though, there's our second relic coming in. Going to be taking Lucifer up to about 600 gold a minute passive. So that's going to be very nice for him. Keep in mind, he is behind on villager lead at, or on the villager count at the moment. So 39 up against 57. And uh, I think uh, relic in the, the Regnitz Cathedral works out to be about seven and a half villagers nearly. Exactly. So that's 
He's, uh, even if he manages to get three relics in there, he's still going to be just behind. Yeah, yeah, but obviously they also super protected, right? You don't need to move out. You have gold in the long run for yourself, and your opponent doesn't really know what your villager count is going to be, right? French knows, okay, I killed villagers, I have the faster working town center, so I have to be ahead. But still, if you know your opponent might have three relics as HRE, you feel like the late game can't be yours. Yeah, it's a really difficult position. You know, we often talk about this this whole concept of the Holy Roman Empire. They want to get to those three relics. They want to get to their Palace of Swabia. And if they can do that on an even footing, then almost certainly they will win the game. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The big question is, though, how much damage are they taking before getting to those two crucial things? Correct. Because you can get to the Imperial Age with the Palace of Swabia, but if you've got five rams in your base, it ain't going to be pretty. Yeah, I can show you some records of mine. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, how often I lost. Like, I'm reaching him with HRE and dying 30 seconds after that. Yeah, yeah. Feels nearly, man. Feels nearly, man. But uh, we, we see that uh, at this point in time, so Lucifron is playing it incredibly well. He's not committing to any fight, but at the same time keeping his enemy in his base. But look at this. Bit of an expansion. Very dangerous out here. Nearly no outpost guarding these villages. That feels risky. It feels really risky because here we've got knights... Heading on a beeline. They've got scouts with them as well, if I remember correctly. No, it looks like the scouts have broken off. He's going to be able to spot them. The Joust come out heading towards that villager line. Looks like three villagers gone down, four villagers nearly. I've lost count. Oh, I traded off against one knight. Can't be too happy with that one. That, like, it's like we considered it to be quite a risky move, and he instantly got punished. Wow. Yeah, and actually pinching up a relic from the center of the map. Now, keep in mind, he's actually got a relic that's quite safe above his base that still sits out there. It's being guarded up by a single scout at the moment, but by no means uh, an effective defense mechanism for him. But uh, actually going to be potentially securing up four relics this game for Lucifron. Oh, that's pretty nice for him. One at the far right, and Vortex, he, well, still has roughly 25 population lead. But with all those relics, it feels like the economy is better for the Holy Roman Empire. And they are now starting to add some archers to themselves. And let's not forget the Arkham Chapel that is sitting there buffing up all of those villages that mm -hmm. are underneath it. So mm -hmm. I think he's still got quite a bit of the wood line that's there. Uh, and obviously he has added in significant amount of farms underneath that as well. Okay, well, let's see. It feels like Vortex is muscling up. 37 military against 30. Not really sure, pound for pound, who is better there. Obviously, Veteran Arch is now trying to help out. Spearman won't get chased down too much. Simply not enough archers. Yeah, I'm starting to feel like it might not be enough, enough archers, but at the same time, there's not a lot of spears there. Knights coming around the back. Got to be able to clear up those archers uh, from Vortex, or from uh, Lucifron, rather. But it uh, does look like it might be a little bit of a cleanup here with Vortex, at least from the way I'm looking at it. I'm seeing a lot of blue, but there could be red in there. It's a bit difficult to see, I'll be honest with you, Nilly. And a couple spears now coming in. Now, keep in mind, these are veteran spears. They're upgraded. But it looks like Lucifron going to be able to hold on here, going to be able to clean up his brother. And I suspect that after this, he's probably going to know that he's behind. And I, I wouldn't be surprised if we see Vortex tap out. Ooh, well, he still sees, okay, that's an army that I can maybe deal with with my reinforcement. Still should know that he has a solid village elite, so continuing there might be a reasonable thought. But yeah, really exposed resources and great gold income for his opponent, plus better military. I don't think that the French player, although population is indicating it, is actually in the lead. Yeah, I feel the same way. Typically coming into the game against the Holy Roman Empire, you've got one goal, and that is kill them before they get relics or hmm. steal their relics. It, it's one of those two things. And unfortunately, Vortex wasn't able to kill him before he got the relics, and he wasn't able to steal the relics. And now he's in a very difficult position. And the wild thing is, this is on Dry Arabia, right? The most open map. Yeah. And French is one of the best if at punishing. So you really see how great the defense of Lucifron is. Yeah, he had a really good map, a really nice compact defense, but how he flew to Castle Age to get to those relics, really nice move, even after all the pressure. Remember, we still had a big ram go in this game. Yeah, yeah, that's a really good point. Now, we've also got a keep that is going up at the moment in the base of Vortex. And this kind of looks like a move for desperation. He's going to be trying to hold on. He wants to prevent his death from happening. But keep in mind, behind this, you've got three relics in the Regnant's Cathedral just pumping out gold non-stop. He's got that, that uh, Palace of Swabia that is going to be on the way very shortly. I mean, it doesn't look like he's really thinking about Imperial at this point in time. Still only 100 food in the, in the bank. But, uh, you know, it's, it's only a... a short market trip away from uh, hmm. from being in the Imperial Age. Yeah, the question though, what are you really achieving with Imperial Age? Do you think you have enough bombards? Maybe 
a longer car slate is needed, simply because you are not walled at all. On the other side, though, we saw Vortex. He's trying to control the map a bit more with his wall to the top and now at the bottom. Yeah, so looking to play a little bit more in the long game uh, in, the, in this situation, uh, how many town centers has he actually got out for Vortex? Is it just the one at this stage? Just the one. Just the one, yeah. So ideally, with these walls, you'd like to see a second town center come up as well. But it's going to be tough going up against uh, what could be a, an Imperial coming in very shortly. We start seeing that food being stacked up. He's up to about 800 food at the moment, Lucifron. And could be heading up very shortly. Lucifron now finally going for eco upgrades, food upgrades. We also see some armor there for Melee. Already got the attack for his archers. Wheelbarrow coming in, gold upgrade. He feels like, okay. 21 minutes, I want to have eco upgrades. <laughs> That's the classic He wants to have all the upgrades. Look at yeah. that, he's researching six upgrades at the moment. It's the, cl the classic 21 minute uh, economic upgrade timing. This is a, this is a standard build order, Nelly. I'm surprised yeah. that you're surprised. Maybe he was uh, opening the stream and felt like, what is this overlay? Why aren't we using it? Oh, oh, okay. That's right. That's right. Oh, jeez. But we do see that second town center being dropped down uh, for Vortex. At least it was attempted to be dropped down. I'm not sure if you saw what happened down there. But uh, it looks like it has now been dropped down. So just getting put down there. Plenty of villagers in that position. So Vortex doing the right thing. He needs to try and go into the late game here. Get a little bit of a, a villager lead in the end because once that villager printer comes out for Lucifron, it is going to be incredibly difficult to come back into this game. Yeah. This is this is a weird passive game by Vortex. He lost so much, the yeah, I see how it's tricky for him to be aggressive, but he kind of was walled. Maybe he lost too many knights to really allow himself to go for the raids. He still will make a good defense happen, but he will be caught off guard by the early Imperial Age. Yeah, this is a, a really smart move is for him to wall in this position. So ideally, he wants to prevent his brother Lucifron from coming in from all these different angles. Because one of the things that you'll typically see the Holy Roman Empire do is try and look to get these sneaky little raids into every wood line, into every gold mine, into all your berries, and try and just whittle you down slowly and destroy your morale. So by putting these walls up, it stops that from happening. And now we can see the Palace of Swabia is up nearly. Look at those villagers coming out. I don't know about you, but last time I made it the Palace of Swabia, it was just like, it made a sound. It was like... Uh, the palace made... That's the one, that's the one. Yes, it, it is exactly the sound that it makes. And you can he hear and see those villagers just coming out so quickly. Every five seconds, there is a new villager on the field. So Lucifer going to be in a great position here in about three or four minutes. Mm -hmm. Well, he already is playing the long game, right? He has the relics we mentioned multiple times, but it simply is such a big factor. Now he got lots of eco upgrades in. He he just loves to not fight right now because so much is going right for him. He gets more villagers, has more set up for the late game, now goes for a strong infantry. And yeah, that's exactly it. He's in a great position here. You can see all those beautiful farms amongst the Appen, Arkham Chapel, rather. But uh, yeah, they're all getting buffed up. He's having a great time. And uh, now gonna be looking towards infantry. We can see a bombard coming out here as well. So probably gonna be able to break down that keep easily. But uh, keep in mind, the Holy Roman Empire got a lot of great buffs up for their infantry. I think they've also got the plus three armor for spears. But speaking of spears, Knight's gonna be running in now to a couple of spears inside the base of Lucifron. I think that Vortex probably realizes his time might be up and see if he can push his luck. And unfortunately, gonna be repelled from this position. Do we have elite units coming out as well there, Nilly? Not yet. As we can see, still Castle Age Knights. We have some Spearman Bombards are now coming in, but Vortex, he needed to do damage there. And as you saw with the body language there, not happy that he didn't find any. Yeah, it's a very tough position for him. Uh, he's sitting on 87 villages at the moment, or 89 villages. He just went up. We can see Lucifer going to be running and sprinting right after him. He's on 83, but now catching a raid up towards the north side of his base. Look at the infrastructure that's on the front line here. He is going to be absolutely pumping out infantry very, very soon. What are the next steps here for Vortex? This is really tricky. It feels like he needs to do damage. But every single time he's trying to find any, he's just getting pushed back. And yeah, he's annoying a bit, forcing some villager movement, but he needs to do more than that. That's a nice pickup, for example. This is nice. This is exactly what he needs to be doing. But keep in mind, playing up against the Holy Roman Empire, you kill one villager and six more appear in their place. <laughs> yeah. It's just, it's a never ending story with those guys. So nice walls coming out, actually towards this north position looking to get a trap in now keep in mind he hasn't actually he's hasn't finished these walls so it's going to be very easy for vortex to just come in right click those walls down but it is going to be a little bit of a fight in this stealth forest here he doesn't really realize how many units are there manages to make his way away but you can see the is it the zwi handler there the doppel soldner the lance connect 
<laughs> hammering away at those knights. Yeah, and knights need to run. Still, Vortex nowhere near MPLH. Look at that. 150 food, 1200 income. So he needs to idle two minutes to go up. Oh, Red Palace actually on the way. So my bad. And now at some more archer ranges. Feels like Abolitaires on the field. Yeah, that could definitely be the right move for him. The difficult thing that he's going to be in, in play is that at this point, Lucifer's just going to be able to go mass spears because Holy Roman Spear is quite strong. Obviously, they've got the faster speed. They've got the extra armor. They are just absolute beasts. And uh, they do very, very well uh, pound for pound up against archers, up against Arbolatria. Uh, and in the late game, it can be almost impossible to deal with them unless you've got Mangonels. Mangonels were a bit exposed, but that's something that... Vortex didn't know, so couldn't really commit. Low HP knights know as well. Some spearmen were there threatening those knights away. We are in now 180 pop against only 130 for Vortex, though. That population didn't increase as much as, as he was hoping for. Yeah, he's in a very difficult position here, obviously going up against a huge economy in Lucifront. But Lucifront looking like he's in prime position to even up this series and take it up to 1 1. Oi, 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 oi. Spears now moving out. Now we do see uh, some elite upgrades are coming through. I think that might be the elite Lanskinex, just because uh, they've got the little hat next to the, the <laughs> yeah. elite sign. So uh, we could be starting to see some uh, some real damage getting out on the field. When these guys go go to elite, they start killing everything. It's wild. Ah, the double tear against that coming in though. Some scouts queued up as well. Ooh. So it might be scout buffer. Hubble tier behind that. An yeah. army composition that I think I've never seen before. Yeah, it could definitely work. A, a huge amount of scouts now up towards wow. the north. Yeah, look at wow. that. Six scouts coming out. Probably going to be looking to siege down these bombards now. He spotted out that red palace. He immediately got evaporated by a couple of the, those shots and decided, I'm going to go up towards the north. He's done that. He's found a couple of cavalry units up here. And you can see that red palace firing off with the Arbor Latria uh, emplacement. I'm not sure exactly what it's called, but that thing absolutely smashes. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And you can add so much more damage output there. So that's not really an angle where you can attack into. But look at that. Only paper wall, especially against double bombards breaking through that. I think the keep should be up in time, though, for the defense. Yeah, it's going to be really tough considering that there are two bombards coming in behind. We can see that they are looking to get into position, take out that castle. And, uh, I mean, the, the primary thing here is it's not the Red Palace. The Red Palace would just, I'm not even kidding you, it would probably shred through that entire infantry mass. It is so damn strong. Okay. But uh, this keep, on the other hand, yeah, barely an outpost. <laughs> Lucifron, more bombards in the queue. Also, the speed upgrade for those bombards now going in there. Scout's really good against Siege now, but didn't really get the hits in. Didn't really get it. It was a very nice wall delete. A good little attempt there to come in. I definitely think Lucifron thought he was safe sitting up against that wall. And then all of a sudden, the wall gets deleted and you, you start scratching your head. But now, continuing to fight up against his brother here. Pushing into a nice little choke point. We see those spears beginning to move down towards the upper tree. Those guys are trying their best. Uh, I'd be curious to know whether they've got their Gambesons out just yet, but that scout mass is really starting to build nearly. Uh oh, keep fell at the top. Now trying to run around. Bombards are squeezing in. Pop 160 against 200. Now pushing into the woodline. Villagers have to be pulled. Scouts getting close to the Bombards, but not finding the kills. Yeah, so many spears in here to protect. Beautiful micro coming out. And it looks like good game has been called. Lucifront victorious. Ties up the series 1-1. Victorious with the Holy Roman Empire. Wow, I really will rewatch that game. That's that's such a clean defense here. Yeah, he had a very compact map, but it's so easy for French to do a lot of pressure. And we had the knights, we had really nice knight numbers as well. The archers were added, rams came in quite reasonably quickly. So I, I was really surprised how HRE survived there. Yeah, he did a great job, really. Uh, we've seen two impressive defenses so far in this series. So it really seems to be that every single time the aggressor has moved out, they've been slapped, they've been clapped, they've been punished. And uh, yeah, I suspect it will be the theme that we see today. These guys are incredibly evenly matched. Having that defender's advantage really going to help you out. Obviously, in that situation, we saw that uh, both players had invested in something. We had Lucifron in uh, in this game who invested in his uh, in his age three, and by the same token, Vortex in the first game investing mm -hmm. in that town center, and yet still able to defend, able to hold on, able to overcome. Yeah, and French not finding the W there, although they had such a good opening. That's so weird. And French is kind of the civilization where we, at the very start of the game, felt like very, very start of the game, felt they were so good. 
now people know how to play against the knights. Obviously, br having brace kind of helps for the all civilizations. And we are in the situation where they're kind of the measurement, right? They're kind of right in the middle where you feel like, is the civilization better than them? Then they're probably below average. If they're better, then they're probably above average. And you can see two losses for French for now. Yeah, that's impressive, isn't it? Well, impressive, surprising, because we do consider them to be quite a strong civilization, but I guess at the same time, a predictable civilization as well. So we take a look now. Vortex has access to Hillendale. He's got access to Lippany, two of his home maps that he's picked out. So we could potentially be seeing uh, some, some Delhi shenanigans. Both of these maps, great for Delhi. He does have the Holy Roman Empire available to him, and obviously his brother doesn't have access to that in Lucifron. Lucifron doesn't also have access to the Delhi Sultanate as well. So I think Holy Roman Empire on, on Hill and Dale, a very strong pick. Also, where does Lucifron play Mongols? He still has Mongols, right? Because he got banned away, Delhi banned away. Mm. So that's interesting. Mongolian Heights, we have seen quite questionable. Do you He's want to play against... for that, doesn't he? Yeah. Yep. Do you want to play against Delhi on... Hill and Dale there? Or do you want to use them on Lippany, which kind of feels like the most likely thing? Yeah, yeah, I think it works well. Uh, it, it's it's interesting how the draft has gone, and I, I definitely think the fact that he managed to to, to lose with the French. Gosh, it's, it's so tough losing with the French because you really lose a lot of uh, a, lo a lot of options when it comes to it. So, yeah, I'm curious to see where he's going to fit the Mongols in. But he also killed French, right? So That's right true. now we are down <laughs> into a best of three without French, so not the worst thing ever. Mongols will be the big question mark. Delhi will be the big question mark. Probably the two civilizations that we consider to be the best. But the brothers banned different civilizations, so that's going to be the interesting case there. Whew, Vortex, an absolute beast on Hill and Dale. I really want to see him play that one. And maybe we have a draft there. Ooh. We have got the civilizations. We'll just check and see whether we've got the map. Well, you can look at map seeds on our Discord. Obviously, lots of stuff going on. And yeah. you can see Hill and Dale. Hill and Dale game three. It is going to be Delhi up against the Vrus. Did you expect to see the Rus coming out on Hill and Dale? No. And I, I think this is part of the reason. Like, It's sort of a pretty smart move here by Vortex because Vortex bans out the Delhi for his brother and then forces him to pick the, uh, the Holy Roman Empire, which are the two primary mm -hmm. civilizations on this map. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Really smart move. I mean, Lucifer's just got, he's got Rus that he can throw out. I mean, what are the other options? China? But Abbasid? Yeah, yeah, maybe. I think those would have been the ones that I predicted earlier than Rus. But Lucifer, obviously, you do the map draft before, then you like you get the ban of the civilization. So he knew what he was getting into. Yeah. So he knew, okay, I won't have Delhi, and I'm deciding that HRE are going to be played on a different map. So I'm a bit surprised. It's Yeah, it's very curious to see. So we have got the map seed. We're going to be loading into the game very shortly. Uh, but what are your predictions for this? Coming into this, we're seeing the Rus come out. What is it that he could possibly do to defeat the Delhi here? Because it is a civilization that is so incredibly strong on this map. If I had a good answer, <laughs> we wouldn't be that surprised. We wouldn't. Because right? if it was China... You'd be able to say, okay, well, he's going to Song Dynasty Boom. If it was Abbasid, you'd say, oh, he's going to Fast Castle and do a Man at Arm push with some Mangonels. But the Rus come out and you're just like... Horse Archers? I guess. <laughs> but Horse Archers is so late. You're already like, up against two, pro potentially three sacred sites. Yep. You might be fully walled in. Yep. Against Delhi, you need to play Feudal Age. And Rus Feudal Age, it's not, not the, the hottest thing on the block. It's going to be an interesting game, ladies and gentlemen. We'll be stepping into the game shortly, so stay with us. But uh, I mean, we didn't do predictions at the start of this game, at the start of this series, nearly. But we're currently one-one, so it's effectively a best of three. Well, my, after after I saw the sims, my money is easily on Vortex. Damn it, Delhi against Rus and Hilltail. Well, you, because you're a smart man. <laughs> and speaking of smart men, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to game number three between Vortex and Lucifer. Two intelligent, smart guys. That's how they got here. Uh, they are incredibly talented at this game, but uh, we're going to be jumping in now. He missed the sheep. Sheep. Ugh. Oh, it's terrible when you miss the sheep, isn't it? It's. Mm. Uh, I, I, I um. Often I'll go through a game and I'll pick up my my sheep, and I'll be wondering where's the rest of my sheep, and then I go back and watch the replay, and I've just walked past it. 
Oh, and that's, yeah. oh, just breaks your heart, nearly breaks your heart. But spawning in on the uh, the southwest side of the map, in the color blue, we've got Vortex, who is playing as the Delhi, opening up with a mill here, nearly. Looks like he's going for a pretty standard opening. Yeah, absolutely. Mosk relatively late, but simply wants to go for the early wheelbarrow there. And remember, just latest change, minus 50 wood for Delhi. Yeah, so not having the, uh, the extra 50 wood means things are coming in a little bit later. Uh, for them, but the, over on the uh, the east side of the map in the color red, playing as the Rus, we've got his brother, it's Lucifron. Mm -hmm. Who's playing two scouts for now, hunting cabin will finish pretty soon, and as we can see, we had really good defensive goals for the Delhi player there, and Rus, well, very reasonable map for themselves as well. Do we see the third scout or not is the big question, and for now, not in the queue. I think this is quite a smart move uh, to be playing this way up against the Delhi with the Rus. But I only I say that with a caveat. So typically, the Delhi aren't going to be a civilization that looks to take control of the deer hunts. So it's going to leave them open here for Lucifron if he wants to go into professional scouts. We did see in both games prior to this that players looked to go into professional scouts. So Lucifron is going to be a bit ahead of, uh, of Vortex in that regard. But that's really the only positive I can think of on this map. If we take a look at the relic spawns here, looks to be relatively even here. We've got a very safe relic up to the, towards the north here for Lucifron, a safe relic over towards the west for Vortex, and every other relic seems to be just scattered around the middle. Obviously, you could make arguments for both sides, but I'd be pretty happy with this if I was either player. Mm -hmm. And sacred sites are interesting as well. Pretty far away from each other. Look at that. Hugging the edge of the map. Guarded perfectly in the center. And the other one at the top again. Hugging the edge of the map. This is tougher to protect. Obviously easier to wall if you want to wall to the edge of the map. But to get there, more walking time, tougher to protect. This is not ideal for Delhi. Yeah, I think you're 100% on the money. I, I think a sacred site victory probably going to be out of the question. Uh, but Lucifron will, should be able to contest at least one of those sacred sites and, and keep his brother off the uh, holding the three sacred sites. And it's going to be a bit annoying for him. He's going to be having to work overtime getting out there. Uh, but yeah, it's interesting to see the spawns happen because sometimes on this map you get a little bit of a weird spawn. It's kind of like Lippany where you'll get two on the same side and then one kind of in the middle. Much easier for Delhi to defend. But uh, obviously this map script, it's, it's come pretty well. Um, but, uh, I mean, looking at the bases, I, I definitely, I'm a big fan of Lucifron. I love being in the corner on this map. If I'm, in my, if I'm in Vortex's position, I kind of feel like I'm a bit exposed. Mm, yeah, I can see that. By the way, all the wolves now getting killed. I just wanted to say, wow, this is really bad for getting scholars over there, but not really the case here. Rebarrow takes quite some time. Didn't he start that like two and a half minutes ago? Yeah, it takes some time. <laughs> takes quite some time. Uh, but we do now have the age ups coming through. Uh, I would suspect that we're not going to be seeing any sneaky shenanigans uh -oh. here. It's going to be a Dome of the Faith. Who get the last shot? Nine HP, six HP you want to shoot? No! Oh, sh shot, shot the, the wrong one? No, he, he shot, shot the, the right, right one. one. Yeah, mm. to bait it. Oh, oh, look at oh. that. Oh, Both wow. dodging. Mind games. Hashtag oh, mind oh, games. Okay. Turn around, turn around. He's not paying attention. Shoot, 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 shoot. Oh, beautiful. Good job. I, I like this. That's, that's that's very, very sweet, the way that they sort of fake out each other with shooting at the wrong wolf or the wrong mm -hmm. wolf. Golden <laughs> Gate. <laughs> <laughs> Golden Gate coming down now for Lucifron. Uh, no surprises there. I'd be curious to know what direction he's going to look to go in, whether we see him go for a second town center, like we saw Vortex do it in the first game, whether he looks to go for a fast castle, try and snag some of those relics and equalize. Because keep in mind, the Delhi has been nerfed a little bit in the most recent patch, as you mentioned. They don't have that wood available to them at 50 wood, but they've also had their sacred site extra gold brought down as well. So no longer 100% extra gold, only 50% now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so true. Plus, remember, we here at the tournament made the rule that we won't allow herbal medicine for Delhi as well, because we felt that upgrade is simply too strong, and therefore we won't see that one being researched. We have seen some crazy plays on the ladder with like 8 to 10, 12 scholars, and you can't kill a single unit. Felt like that strategy is not that entertaining, and probably too strong, that's why we banned it. Uh, a, a wise move, I think. There's also a couple of other in-house things that we've got banned out as well. Don't forget about those stone walls nearly in H2 <laughs> and stone towers throughout the entire game. Uh, not going to be permitted here. But uh, we now see that a little bit of a... We've got a, a military production cancellation. It looked like a, an archery range that we've got cancelled there instead of dropping down a stable. 
If we look from the Delhi base, trying to get outside, ah, you can squeeze through the wood line there and the cliff. Yeah, I was a bit scared that he had to loop around the full wood line, but can just get over there, so all good in the hood. Stable and barracks continuing to produce on the other side. Now archers from Lucifron. The big question still is like, w why Rus? Yeah, you get professional scouts, but now we go maybe knight. Archer? You know what I think might happen? Maybe th they know something that we don't with the Rus. That, awesome. sec that second town center that we saw mm -hmm. in the first game with the defense, there was so many units out of there. Now, typically up against the Delhi, you're going to need a lot of units. So maybe Lucifron is looking to stay age two and looking to go really heavily into army, but at the same time playing off the town center. So we'll have to wait. We'll have to see. He's not gathering up a lot of wood, so... I'm probably throwing spaghetti at the wall and it's absolutely sliding off. It is not sticking right now, Billy, but we'll have to wait. And see. I think on another map and against another civilization, the second town center is really strong for Rus. Here, I feel you're giving up so much momentum that the opponent will get to the sacred sites. And if you give like Delhi too much breathing room, it's not looking too pretty. So I think a second town center feels a bit unlikely on this map. All right, we'll, we'll wait. We'll have to see. Lucifron a little bit behind when it comes to military count. Village account still quite even at this point. Keep in mind, Sanctity about to come through. It's about we're seven minutes into the game, and normally you see it around the 7.20, 7.30 mark. Uh, do we have those scholars going out just yet? Well, I take a look and see. It doesn't look like it at this stage. There we go. First scholar now moving out. Two scholars also moving up towards the north. So he means absolute business at this point. How long do we have on Sanctity? We ask our beautiful observer over there. Not too long at all. 20 seconds to go, ladies and gentlemen. Nearly one of the things I love to mention is that uh, the, the perfect Delhi situation or, or play should be the moment that you have Sanctity researched. You hear boom, boom, boom. All three sacred sites mm -hmm. being mm -hmm. captured. And that's what it looks like. Vortex is going to be going for. Yeah, it looks like a really good timing. Stayed in there as long as he could to increase those upgrade timings. But once Sanctity is there, he goes for it. Will arrive within some seconds. And that simply triggers the rules to be more aggressive and contest them, right? Now the barracks being added. We go for 1-1-1. One, one, one. Yeah, smart moves coming out here. Now keep in mind, Lucifron's also got professional scouts. So he's going to be bringing in those deers as well. Boom. He, was he standing on that sacred site and it was... Boom. Did, did you see that one in the middle? Look at that. What, what do we got here? We got a little well, bit one of a... Foot, one foot is enough. <laughs> it's, uh, is it a foot? It doesn't even look like he's got a foot. I mean, I'm mean, i not sure. If I was Turn the referee the observer, up, I'd, I'd call that out. Yeah, That's <laughs> that's a clear out. Yeah, that's That's out. cheating. Yep. <laughs> We're going to have to... Are you kidding me? We don't even need the video referee for this one. <laughs> On the front line, we've got plenty of horsemen coming out now. Nearly. What beats archers and horsemen? Mm, only horsemen. Correct. And nice. that's exactly what we've got. We've got only horsemen just melting through because the, the defensive horsemen don't have enough uh, attack to stop the offensive horsemen. And they're just able to come in and destroy those uh, those archers completely. We can see those archer bodies still in the ground. Uh-oh. And yeah, so much control for our Delhi player here. 56 population against 44 villagers even, but military just doubling here and doing some more damage. Now knights being mixed in, but we already see spearmen from Delhi and obviously pretty easy to get more upgrades on them now nearly take a look in the bottom left hand corner of your screen you're going to see the brand new sacred site counter nine minutes and 45 seconds to go ladies and gentlemen thank you very much to our beautiful developers for that that have put that in overlay guy uh, but now we've got ourselves a bit of a fight unfolding horsemen on horsemen archers fighting up against those spears and spears just getting some great stabs in here uh-oh, and that's more control, but being pushed back, committing against some archers, I'm a bit surprised, but Spearman doing quite some damage, three of them hit behind the fight, and obviously Daddy player is so happy now, just equaling out army, and he knows he has to have the way better income, and we can see it in gold, look at that, nearing 600 gold per minute pretty soon. Uh, I'm in a really difficult spot here, because I don't see a win condition for Lucifron at all, I just can't see it. Vortex has now got every single upgrade online, take a look at that. Mm -hmm. He's got his horticulture, he's got his double broad axe, he's got specialized pick, and of course he's got his wheelbarrow. He's got the same amount of villagers as Lucifron, uh, or uh, yeah, as, as his brother, or at least uh, one village difference, but they're much more efficient villagers. And he's also got the Pista de la Resistance, the oh, three yeah. sacred sites. Oh, did he prepare that one? Mm, yes. Nice. <laughs> but uh, how does he get ahead? Because 
We've also got the scholars inside the production buildings that are just pumping out units faster. Mm -hmm. Look at the gold income right now. He's sitting on a thousand gold stacked up. He's trading out a couple of it. Yeah. He's going to castle. He's out producing. He's out booming. He's doing everything. Yeah, yeah. Pretty crazy there. 540 gold income. So has, I think, like two villages on gold in addition to the three sacred sites, giving him 450 gold. And he's just super happy sitting in the center, sending some units over. And I mentioned earlier, yeah, it's far away. Therefore, you won't get control. And yeah, that's a bit what we see. Mobility from the Roos player could go over there trying to neutralize those sacred sites. Spearman need to come over, but I think I saw some dots on the minimap movement. One of the things that I always fear when I'm playing the Delhi is that I'm not even going to be able to stop them from taking the sacred sites. I think it's so important that you, you try and at least just get a scout out there, just a single scout, so that when that scholar inevitably gets on that sacred site, you're at least stopping it from capturing that site. Because right now, every second, the Vortex holds onto that sacred site that income is still trickling in for him. So mm. even though down towards the south, we saw scouts coming down to neutralize, if a horseman stands on the site or a single spear like this case, then that still allows that gold to keep coming in. Which really surprised me is how quickly both players actually ended up getting to Castle Age. And, oh, so the, the <laughs> cook went pretty wild there. And fire alarm started here. Hot <laughs> pants, hot dishes. <laughs> That's it. It's exactly right. Speaking of hot pants, Lucifron up into the castle age where uh, hopefully that guy, that's not coming in for you guys. Actually, I'm seeing in the chat, we're seeing some beeps coming through. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, we're having fun. Don't worry. All okay, right. now the big fight here. Archers are getting cleared up, trying to push this one down. Both players will be castle age pretty soon. We always already have the Roos player there. And it feels like that's a good clear up for Delhi. Yeah, Delhi looking incredibly strong at this point. Keep in mind, they still don't have those upgrades, but once they've got them through, it's going to be almost impossible to stop them. Now in the Castle Age as well here. 12 minutes and 20 seconds, not a bad time at all. But uh, we actually see the Knight does get taken out up towards the north. He's held the Sacred Site down towards the south. The middle one was neutralized, but mm -hmm. at what cost? He's lost out his entire army. Yeah, and now the question is like, what army are we going for? Men at Arms? Not bad against what we see on the field on the other side. We now see Men at Arms be mixed in, Spearman upgrade, Archer upgrade so much. And if we have Men at Arms against Men at Arms, Roost not looking too hot against Delhi. Yeah, it's a really difficult spot for him because uh, I, I still fail to identify this win condition. Sure, he can go and capture the relics, but he's still going to be very behind. You can see the Vortex is also researching the second upgrade or the second tier of upgrades for all of his economy. He's going to be in a great spot here having fertilization. Uh, he's going to have lumber preservation. He's going to have acid distillation. He's going to be absolutely perfect as we enter into that 15 minute, 16 minute mark. His economy is booming. Speed upgrade for the men at arms as well. So many things going on that the Roos player can't have. And honestly, I think Lucifron played really well. It just feels like on this map, Delhi are a bit better. 20 population lead here, still getting so much gold income in addition to the villages that he has on gold. Yeah, we see a little bit of a fight now over this central sacred site. A, a warrior monk going to be coming out and picking a fight with uh, what appears to be a scholar. A bit of a religious battle on that sacred site. The power of God compels you. And uh, unfortunately, the power of God was not enough because uh, the, the, uh, the Delhi player is absolutely overwhelmed, the Rus player. Oh, honestly, now I kind of want Lucifron to win. Simply that we have the interview and I can ask him what, what his <laughs> game plan was. Like, honestly, I, I tried to find... I, I, like, I was hoping to be blown away. And I, I, my body was ready to see the crazy rule strategy that ca cancels out all the deli. But the game kind of went into the direction that we predicted and feared. Yeah, I think that coming back to that... If, if, if I had a drawing board and I, I, I wrote out 100 games, you know, eventually, I, I'm thinking this is probably what he should have gone for. Scouts on each of those sacred sites. Mm -hmm. So you at least stop the sacred site from being captured. Just one mm -hmm. up on, you know, one up the top, one down the bottom. Mm -hmm. That's 300 gold a minute gone. Try and get down a second town center because then that's at least your win condition. You're somewhat scaling, mm -hmm. uh, getting villages out. And then at the same time, look towards that castle age. But we didn't really see any of that coming out. So... Hmm. It was a tough position for Lucifron, but uh, I mean, it sort of went the way that we expected it to go. Yeah, yeah, true. <sighs> uh, that's a bit unsatisfying for me, I have to say. Mm. Obviously, still really good for Lucifron. He has Mongolian Heights as his home map. 
plus he also has Mongols. Mm. So there are two good things r going on for him. So he could may maybe have a nice strategy prepared that he trained on the ladder, Mongolian Heights. We could see an English play. We could see Abbas at work. And then maybe still Mongols on Lipany. Lucy Front still has reasonable chances. Yeah, yeah, I like this. Now, keep in mind that uh, Vortex has got available to him the Holy Roman Empire, which... I mean, on these maps, on Mongolian Heights, on Lipany, probably not the strongest civilization. Um, but uh, I, I think that's probably why I expected that he'd go for the HRE on Hill and Dale and then save the Delhi for these maps. Because Delhi in this situation, I mean, Delhi on Mongolian Heights, that's an instant win. Delhi on Lipany, that's an instant win as well. <laughs> so, yeah, a bit, bit curious because, yeah, now he's got sort of a great sieve, but not a good map for it. But, yeah, I mean, coming into this, what, you're, you're predicting to see Lucifron on the Mongols. At some point. <laughs> but more on, on Lipany, right? Than on Mongolian Heights. Mongolian Heights True. is the next map. Mm. And then that's the big question, right? Like, you could play English. Yeah. But do you want to play an English mirror? Oh, I think, honestly, if it goes English mirror on Mongolian Heights. It could, yeah. I predict in 45 minute plus game. That's what I was thinking as well, yeah. Yes. Like, because how do we get an advantage <laughs> on, that, on that map? And that, they will both recognize that as well. So mm -hmm. you're going to, you might see, uh, I remember Viper, eco upgrades. Viper versus Corp. Uh, K A U P is a streamer on Twitch. Mm -hmm. I watched a game of theirs, went for 45 minutes, and uh, Viper opened 3 TC and Corp opened 4 TC. <laughs> and uh, I suspect we might see the same thing. What, what, here. what, Emerson or. No, English Mirror. English Mirror, English 3 mirror. TC against 4 TC. Yeah. Fuel Age. Yeah. What? Yeah. It was wild. It was wild. Let me guess. It ended on your YouTube? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. They, they loved it. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, I will watch that one as yeah. well. Sick. Yeah. Viper plays against a defensive masterpiece. Oh, a defensive masterpiece. Yes, yes. <laughs> I like oh, the accent. That's a good touch. Okay. Yes, that was exactly it. Yeah, I was like spreading my finger away. Yes. Like, defensive <laughs> masterpiece. <laughs> so... Yeah, I think English Mirror is definitely viable. Could potentially see Abbasid as well. Mm -hmm. I mean, if we see Ing I guess the obviously these guys are going to be metagaming, and I think that's why we've seen Lucifer take a bit of a break. He needs to get his notepad out, do a bit of calculating. Mm -hmm. yeah. He knows he can't pick Mongols because he needs to save Mongols for the last map. Mm -hmm. It's it's Lipany, and that'll put him in a great position there because Mongols up against any of those civilizations that are available. I mean, you maybe would see the Abbasid there. So I think at the very least we'll see Vortex with the English. And then I think Lucifron can make a decision whether he wants to match up for an English mirror or whether he wants to go Abbasid into the English, which is also a possibility. That the key difference there is that with the cheaper docks, it means that you can kind of do the runaround. Because mm -hmm. typically what you're going to see an English player do is not go for the water, but instead apply pressure. So with the Abbasid, you can just start docking up everywhere. And eventually you're going to lose the water, but that's okay because you're going to be investing in your town centers behind it. And maybe production can show us the Sif draft again. Mongolian Heights going to be game number four, Lipany game number five. And that's interesting. Is there ever an option to play Chinese on Mongolian Heights either? There is. Um, Barbican rushes have been particularly strong on this map. Mm -hmm. As the Chinese, obviously, you look to control those uh, narrow choke points. So the Barbican does a mm -hmm. great job of, uh, of doing that. So we could potentially see Chinese, but I don't know either of these players to be particularly big fans of China. Yeah, yeah, so true. Mm -hmm. they, they played a lot of meta trying to figure stuff out. China obviously got a big buff. People, I think... They will have a really solid win rate. They had six wins, zero losses in N4C Qualifier 2. Yeah. And the big question is how much they are getting set in. So far, I think played once mm. by Linok yesterday and got yep. one win. Yep, on Altai. Yep. China number one. China number one. They are incredibly... Uh, uh, look, I think they're in a good spot. Linok thinks they're in a good spot as mm -hmm, well. Mm -hmm. But uh, if you were to ask around these parts, uh, pretty much everyone would tell you. They're terrible. Though we did see, was it uh, Viper and um, and De Muslim taking on? Was it China and Abbasid? Was that the matchup? Maybe I'm. Hmm. I don't, I don't remember. Did uh, we have China uh, in there earlier today? You went in and you sp you spoke to players ah, in the practice room. Ah, yeah. Yes. Viper was playing China, but that's that's. Yes. It felt like a warming up game, right. getting into the rhythm, and. Yeah, that was the main thing there. Mongolian Heights, game number four. Okay. Ay, 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 ay. Uh, give me a predict. Give me, give me a prediction. What are the shifts going to be? I think Abbasid English. Uh, I think it's going to be Vortex on 
We still have Mongols on Lucifer's side, by the way. Where's the English over here for Mr. Vortex? Yeah, we still have English for Vortex as well. I think Overlay Guy was a bit quick on the trigger there. I think, I think... No, no, you were just uh, very quick. Like, we are missing some civilizations, but you might have already added them. Hmm, yeah. Overlay Guy is like, what did I do again now? Yeah, so I... I there we go. There we go. Ah. <laughs> yeah. So now we get a big my, smile my from him. Would be definitely Vortex on the English, and then Lucifron on the opposite. But uh, let's see. We we do have the civilization draft here. <laughs> I just <Ooh>. read <laughs> Twitch post. Oh. Overlay guy. What a fitting name for his job. <laughs> And of course, that comes in from the MVP Donati. <laughs> yeah, it was Donati. It was Donati. Oh, that, that, of was, that, was, that was so good. Big shout out to Donati. He's a uh, he's a funny fella. He's he, a, he's, he is. He's he a is. funny fella. Yeah. <laughs> uh, had yeah. a good run in one of the qualifiers. I think round of twelve or something. Had a very tough run. Unfortunately, went up against Vortex. Went up against. Oh, sorry, not Vortex. I uh, went up against uh, Zerton. Went up against mm -hmm. uh, the Mister. Yeah. Got, ah, yeah. Got knocked out by the Mister. Okay. So he almost made it here. He almost made it here. Poor guy. Poor guy. Maybe next time. Maybe next time. Uh, but we do indeed have the uh, the civilization. So it is going to be English for the Vortex. Mm -hmm. But Lucifron, instead of opting for the English or the Abbasid, takes his number one pick, goes with the Mongols. Yeah. So well, a guy already updating the civilizations there earlier and said like, okay, I know what, what they're going to play. He obviously more knowledgeable than we are. Like we are trying to yeah. like <laughs> write stuff down, think about matchups and overlay guy like, it's always English Mongols and just locks it in there. And now we can see how smart overlay guy is. Let's take a look at game number four. Vortex leading 2-1. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to game number four. It is uh, the first series of today, day number two in the N4C. The $100,000 Age of Empires yeah, 4 yeah. tournament. We've got some Khans moving out, or a Khan moving out on the map. Lots of sheep going around here already, nearly. But uh, spawning in over on the left-hand side of your map, it's going to be our English player. It is going to be Vortex in the color blue. Okay. And on the other side, in red, we have Lucifron playing Mongols. Obviously, Mongolian Heights, the map with most sheep in the map pool. And that's why we see so wild numbers. The big question mark will be, who is stalking, where, when, and why? That is a great point. And now we begin to see the first docks in the game. So Lucifron going to be looking to dock it up. Uh, probably not even going to open with any early military in this situation because he knows he doesn't need to. He, he has got the advantage. The question is going to be, how is he going to be able to hold the pressure coming out from Vortex? So I'm expecting that we might see an outpost on the opposite side of the river mm -hmm. just where his fishing is. That's what I would suspect that we see. But uh, already we see him on gold. Just one villager on gold tapping away. Mm -hmm. Also, lots of villagers on wood, as you can see. He opened Ovu and Doc. Mm. That's something we don't see too often. That's a very greedy opening. Mm -hmm. So he's going to be stacking up plenty of stone and at the same time working on his economy. But at the same time, there's not really much English can do in response to that. I mean, they can try and do some for form of pressure in Age 1. But keep in mind, in Age 1, English don't have access to the spearmen. They've only got access to the Men at Arms. And the Men at Arms cost twice as much as the Spearman, yet does the same siege damage or the same torch damage as that Spearman. So you're basically paying twice for the same thing. And that's typically why you won't see that early pressure. But it makes a lot of sense to get these longbows out. How many villagers would you need to kill a fishing ship that is next to a dock? That you out-damage the healing of a dock? I'm going to go with 8.3. 8.3. Okay. Yeah, I, I I don't actually know, though. That is a great question. Is it worth it? The fishing boats? No, because then the fishing boat just runs away. Yeah, probably, right? Mm. And then your villagers are chasing? Yep, and then you're losing eight villager, 8.3 villager seconds every second. Damn. Yeah, that's, that's a lot of villager seconds. Uh, but we continue to see Lucifron adding in plenty of fishing boats at this point in time. Vortex, obviously, on the way up to the second age now with, uh, with that council hall. So no sneaky Abbey of the King's shenanigans today. But... Uh, I'm curious to see how Lucifron continues to move forward from this position. You can see he's just got that one villager on gold. Going to be slowly working towards that second age, but plenty of wood in the bank here for him. So he's going to be able to get out a lot of uh, a lot of fishing boats. And we can see that over on the right-hand side of the screen, there are still fishing boats coming out. At least there was a fishing boat coming out. But uh, four fishing boats going to be enough for him for now. 
And uh, just beware because the archers are going to come out and still we don't see an outpost coming down for him. So obviously he's going to have the Khan here scouting out where the progress of that council hall is. And he knows that longbows are only going to be, you know, 30 seconds away. So I would expect that we would see that outpost coming down sooner or later. Otherwise, I've got no clue how he's going to hold this. I actually think he's planning to give up water. He will accept, okay, I'm up to a few late, solid minute behind you. Mm -hmm. You will have some longbows. But I think he will simply give up all his fishing ships, maybe send them around. Mm -hmm. And if you get like four horsemen, you're fine with your first defense. And that's the stable. Oh. I think this is the horseman defense. He will give up water. Nilly, you've got a big brain over there. That's impressive. I, I'm, I'm impressed that you spotted that out. That is, uh, yeah, it, it typically... In this situation, to me, it doesn't make a lot of sense to be giving up water, especially if you do have a, a, an avenue to potentially keep it. Uh, Loose front is going up to the second age, so he could have looked to, to get that outpost down, but instead deciding to go for the uh, the stable. So we see the first batch of horsemen going to be coming out. This is a smart move, so maybe not even giving up water here. Maybe just knows the timing so well and knows that I can get my horsemen out because these guys are going to absolutely wreck through these longbows. And you only need to send one away. The other three could fit into the dock. The Khan is still checking on the status there. Now jumps in. First horsemen are arriving. I think oh. you want the fuel upgrade, though. This could be dangerous right now for Vortex. Vortex obviously not scouting out that an early stable was being placed down, but you can see that he is very, very careful here. Avoiding coming in, and that Khan does go down. Lucifron now reaching the second age as well, so expect to see that upgrade coming through for the Horseman. There it is on your screens, and we've actually got a Light Junk coming through. Oh, interesting choice. Light Junk obviously not dying too quickly against Longwoman, but I think he's getting out range, so can't really do too much if the English player is super careful. Yeah, so, I mean, coming in at this point now, you'd, you'd think that Vortex probably, he didn't achieve what he wanted to. He's going to have to fall back towards that barracks. You'll expect to see a couple spears out. But at the same time, Lucifron is buying time uh, behind this because, he's the, because his brother, Vortex, is going to have to wait for these spears to come out. Hmm. Okay. How many spears do we need, though? I think the moment we have two spears, we can already move out again. Yep. Horseman trying to find another angle. The problem is we still... Junk. You can't, you can't ever push in mm -hmm. because the light junk will be able to defend it. And it's got the dock nearby. It's going to be healing up. This, oh. is, this is a smart move by Lucifer. That's why he built the dock so close, right? Because he only had shorefish in one direction. Yeah. Now builds another deer, uh, moves the deer stone further forward, inspires those scouts to get over to the, or the horsemen to get to the other side. And that one looks like a villager that wants to build an archer range. <laughs> you can tell by the yeah. way he's standing. Yeah. He, he, that, that, is, that is your very typical archery range building villager. Uh, very smart when it comes to like <laughs> human beings and their motivation in life. <laughs> but now we see that uh, that junk there. How 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 does I he do it? You, I told you. I told you. How does he do it? He looked like it. Looked like a, like a, like an archer range fella. <laughs> but now we see that junk under significant attack, and you can see this is where Lucifer's plan starts falling apart because. Uh, as you mentioned, the longbows outrange that junk quite significantly. They're able to just sit in this little sweet spot, the Goldilocks zone. They're able to fire at him, but he can't fire back. Mm -hmm. Yeah, really nice awareness there. But Jung still constantly getting healed. Could maybe get some repair in there as well. Spearman counters rising. Horseman trying to make something happen. First fishing ship goes down and Jung gets some damage done, but only one volley, not enough. Yeah, you can definitely feel the frustration from Lucifron here trying to deal with these uh, longbows. Not having a lot of success, though. Ay, ay, ay. And then you have to question Mongolian Heights. Is that really the Mongol map? We still had Lipany where we felt they could have been so strong. Maybe an English mirror could have been an option here. Now the Khan arrives, but still, it, it's like Mongols. Often have we counted them out and they somehow made something happen. Yeah, well, remember, he is playing the Mongols, so that's a really good point. They are considered by many to be the strongest civilization. We start to see those archers beginning to come out. A little bit of a raid coming through, picking up these reinforcements now. So Lucifron realizing that he's going to be doing something with his units, and that's going to be the decision that he goes with. So pretty smart move there. Uh, avoids losing too many of those horsemen, but uh, unfortunately, they do get taken out. Uh. One villager down, longbow man range. Sometimes surprises me, holy moly. Spearman trying to hold off his ground. Longbow man helping from distance. And you can see, finds a kill. Now Jung finally should go down. And that means dropping off those 
food with the fish and chips. Not really an option anymore. Yeah, it's a really tough spot here for Lucifer, but at the same time, he does look like he's working Ooh. towards Castle. My fear is that it might not come soon enough because I suspect that we're probably going to see Vortex even potentially look to drop down a battering ram uh, and then really start to put on the herd. Ah, that will be interesting. Now another junk in the queue, more horsemen and archers on the other side, full spearman, longbowman, castle, or like the ram push, going to be a big question mark for me. He is on gold, could maybe go for siege engineers. Did we already see siege engineers? Not yet. Oh, you mean today? We didn't no, see no, 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 out of the blacksmith. No, no, not yet. Just, just finished the blacksmith. Just being finished now. So, yeah, I, I expect that we will probably see siege engineers in a plus one or plus one into siege engineers. Plus one Ooh. into siege engineers, it's going to be. That, so. That's surprising to me. It, fe it felt to me like siege engineers first would have at least been my choice. Yeah, the problem is by going the, the plus one first, you give your enemy a little bit more time uh, to get up into the castle age, and that's what you've really got to be scared of. But loose front at the moment doesn't really look like he's... Uh, He's that close to it. He's about a third of the way at this point. Mm -hmm. And he just invested into more units, so I'm not even sure if he really wants to go for it. Plus, his gold is getting pressured, right? He's not going for any other gold spots. So right now, constant vision on that gold. I'm a bit surprised that we don't see Vortex building a tower at the front. Yeah, this is another interesting thing that we, yeah, we're yeah, seeing. So a distinct lack of towers at this point in time in the matchup. But you can see that Yam network buffing up all those units, chasing away the scout. They are angry. They are mad. They've got big spears, and they do indeed take down the scout. But uh, quite a force starting to build from Lucifer here. Now the interesting thing is, do you play full land and continue to play with this very one-dimensional push and the opponent won't get surprised? Or maybe do you want to squeeze in some water attacks? Now we see the big engagement. Lots of Spearmen died before the battle really started. Yeah, a great trade's coming in here for Lucifer. He's managed to pick off a lot of these spears, but keep in mind they just need a handful to stop these horsemen. These guys aren't as strong as the knights that we do typically see in these early game engagements. And looking to get in on top of those archers, you can see beautiful micro coming out here from Vortex. His longbows do indeed hold, able to take out all the archers of his opponent and manages to eke out a huge lead when it comes to military population here. Wow, and with all those archers going down, the spearmen become so much more efficient and those three horsemen won't do a lot. The Khan was in the middle of all those archers, but we saw Vort Vort Vortex not caring at all, simply wanted to focus down the archers and now has a nice advantage and still continues to rest that gold. And now we do see Siege Engineering come in. So we've got that beautiful Observer overlay that uh, Overlay Guy has worked on. You can see on the left-hand side of your screen that in addition to a Spearman being made, we've also got Siege Engineering coming in. So not too long. That bad boy is going to be in. It's going to be some Rams going down, I suspect, here, Nilly. Yeah, very, very likely. And the question is, what are we attacking first? And it just feels like pushing from the bottom towards that gold is so good. And also, like, the other golds, look at that, both of them at the front next to the town center and the other one where the army is no chance of gold income that one way too far away yeah lucifer really having to stu stuck it out suck it out in the uh, second age and that's never where you want to be as the mongols you typically have the Double ability rip. Oh, this is tough. Yeah, as the Mongols, you typically have the ability to get up ahead of your opponent. And Lucifer, obviously having his gold isolated, means that he can't do that at this point in time. So he's got to stay in H2. And that's exactly where the English wants you. They love fighting you in H2. If they could, they would fight the entire game in mm -hmm. H2. Because their longbows are just uncontested. Or in post them after Hosted, all their farms yeah. are taking in. Yes, but yes. everything in between, not really <laughs> where English are shining. But this is obviously absolutely beautiful. As you said, population really close, though. Still, advantage when it comes to workers there, fishing boats, something that I think Vortex is not really expecting. Yeah, definitely. Battering Rams now beginning to move in towards that archery range as well. Looking to put on a bit of hurt. Two Rams going to be doing twice as much damage as one Ram nearly. Stronger math. <laughs> Take a look at the uh, villagers being pulled out now. I'm curious to know whether these guys have got their textile upgrade in. will enable them to tank a little bit more shots, but we start to see the attack speed arrow now moving out towards the front. Not a lot of horsemen here, unfortunately. Archers being outnumbered by the longbows and spears, just doing a great job of just keeping those uh, those uh, horsemen back. But all of those rams do go down. We see the, the palings on the ground, just a couple of rams being killed, and those longbows still looking very steadfast here. 
Khan goes down. Horseman count down to two here at the front, military-wise. 31 to 14. Looking good. And now he found all the fish. Ran into that one while Mike Tring back. He also has a galley. And this is a big hit for Lucifron's economy. Yeah, this isn't good for Lucifron right now. I think he might be going out very, very shortly. He's lost all of his gold income. Now going to lose his fishing income 100%. There's no two ways about it. That galley is uncontested on water. And we can see that now... Vortex is also making a second galley. So in the event, Lucifron, by some miracle, manages to get out a, a light junk or three, which he would need to stop this galley, he's going to need double that. It's just a very difficult spot right now for Lucifron. I can't see any way that he gets back into this game short of a Manganel shot. <laughs> yeah, Castle H not really there to give us that Manganel shot. So it feels Vortex is just forcing his opponent to stay in fuel age so long, exactly where he wants to have, have him and... Double galley now just protecting all this. Looks really good for Vortex. We need mass horsemen, but I don't really see that as a production. Look at that. Where are we even getting food right now? Yeah, yeah. I, I think that... Oh, it's Is it only dogs? You, you run into that same issue if you go mass horsemen where you, there's so many longbows that they just one-shot all of your horsemen. Uh, yeah. The, the same thing that we saw in Viper up against uh, up against uh, the Muslim. Yeah, but Viper didn't have the armor upgrade. At least something Lucifron has True. here. Yes, that is that is correct. But we can see he's trying to move out with the archer numbers here. He's got that YAM network, but just because you've, you've got faster movement speed doesn't mean you've got stronger units. Nearly. What is this, Doc? What is this ambition here? <laughs> this is... This is a, a very optimistic talk. But that should never work. Look at that. Galleys are coming over. This... What? <laughs> you have no control, my friend. <laughs> Lucifron, uh, I, I, I suspect, yeah, he's just tapped it out. He's typed in GG. The dock was the uh, the nail in the coffin, it seems. It, it felt like it. Maybe he wanted to make something happen there. Maybe some junk action, but did not work out. And Vortex has to be pretty happy. 3-1 victory. He will go 1-1 one, one in total in the Swiss stage for now. We'll play another player that won one game and lost one game tomorrow. So still yet to find out exactly who that will be, obviously. We've got mm -hmm. plenty more sets today for you guys. So don't go anywhere. That's set number one of day number two. Other games that we've got, or other series that we've got coming up, we've got some big ones uh, ahead of us. So the next one that's going to be coming up is uh, Viper up against Mister. Indeed. And yeah. the loser of that match will play against Lucifron. So that's going to be really interesting. That will be the opener tomorrow as well. Mm. And yeah, Lucifron, uh, tough loss for him. Vortex, right where we want to have him in the center of the pack. Yeah, I, I think if you'd asked anybody, anybody in the audience, any of the players here, do you think Lucifron is going to get to the end of day two and he's going to be 0-2? No one would have said that. That's, that's reasonable. It's just... He's it, such a solid player. It, and it, yeah. If you show me, like, if you ask me random tournament, yeah. I would say you're a fool. If I look at, the, at those other seven names, I can't rule it out anymore. Yeah, they are big names. They are really big names. Uh, I'm... I'm, I'm somewhat in awe by the fact that uh, Vortex was such a convincing winner in that last game. Yeah. Yeah. It's also, honestly, I'm a bit surprised by the draft. Yeah. Mongols or Mongolian Heights. Also, the big question mark for me, Ruse on Hill and Dale there. Yeah. Hmm. It, feel, it felt like Vortex outdrafted his brother quite well. Yeah. yeah. Maybe that's something for your interview afterwards. Obviously, Vortex will be coming over and you will have that one prepared for us. I, I, I was just really surprised by that. And maybe he can enlighten us. Maybe there were some shenanigans that we didn't really understand or maybe some mind games that yeah. obviously have to be going deep. There. Yeah, I suspect there's a lot of mind games. These guys obviously practice partners, brothers, best friends, all that good stuff. So they know exactly what, what they're going to be doing or what they're going to be up against. So I wouldn't be surprised if they're looking for some sort of edge. But uh, yeah, be, I'd be curious to know a little bit more about the position that uh, that he thought he was in in that game playing as the Delhi. It's that classic situation where you, you watch what's happening and you're like, what's going on here? Does he, does he know something that I don't know? Mm -hmm. Like, what is the secret? There was no secret. Yeah, or, or maybe it wasn't really executed there. I'm, I'm a bit surprised for sure. And ay, 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 ay. obviously, Vortex, oh, he will go up against, let's think about it, the loser or the winner of Viper Mister or the loser of Lenoch Beastie or the loser of Marine Lord the Muslim. So there are some wild ones. Obviously, it's very confusing. I will do a very good job 
tomorrow morning explaining to you how we came up with those matchups and then we get into wild scenario as well how we get into standing how we get to advance but drongo i think i will invite you to do the interview with vortex because he is ready now for us that excites me greatly so uh yeah so drongo will take it away with the interview after this one viper and mister and a crazy cast going to be delivered by the Muslim and Marine Lord. I think that's going to be a lot of trash talk, but now we hear it from Vortex. All right, fellas, we're on the casting couch here with Vortex. Congratulations, Vortex. 3-1, not a bad effort against your brother. How are you feeling? Yeah, I'm feeling good. I think I played much better today than yesterday. So maybe if I can keep playing better and better, I can reach my level and hopefully do a great tournament. Yeah, yesterday there were a couple of shaky games, but today you looked very solid. I want to ask you about that first game that you played. Obviously, you were playing as the Rus. You went for a second town center quite early, mm -hmm. and yet you still had a really good mass. What was your secret? Yeah, it's just you don't even need to mine stone, so everything is really natural with Rus when you want to go fast expansion because you only gather wood, and like you can just trade the few gold that you have, and that's enough to make ATC. So I figured out against uh, ships like French that try to put pressure with like Knight, Archer and stuff, it's actually really easy to sneak ATC and still have like a decent number of units. I think the problem most of the times with Rus players is they try to make Knights, but I think Horsemen work just as well to stop this kind of aggression. So I think that's what happened. The Horsemen were really, really smart. I, I love the way that you use them because obviously you're playing up against Archers, so it makes a lot of sense to have them. You're getting great value there. Uh, but I want to ask you, the Abbasid Dynasty, typically considered by many to be the only Civ that can go for that second fast town center, are you of the opinion that Rus can do it quite safely as well? Yeah, I think Rus is really good at making fast stacks as well. I think, I mean, with Abbasid, it's obviously even more natural because the villagers are super cheap, so you can make two, or if your opponent is expanding or anything, you can even make, like, three TC plays. But I think with Rus, it's also really good. And I've actually... Now that Boulder Bay is out of the pool, I've actually seen a lot of players like experimenting with Rus on land maps, and most of the times I've seen quite quite the uh, early expansions as well. So I thought uh, I would try it, and I tried a few days ago, and I think it works just as well as with Abbasid, at least in certain matchups uh, against French, for example. I want to ask you about the Hill and Dale game. You were playing Delhi there up against the Rus. We came into that game, Nilly and I, and we're, we're wondering, okay, what does Lucifron know that we don't? Because we couldn't see any possible way that he could win that matchup. Were you scared or fearful about what was going to happen there? Mm, not really. I think uh, Delhi is just too strong right now in the current patch, even in other maps, not only Hill and Dale, but especially in Hill and Dale, and once like, uh, Holy Roman is out of the pool, because I think he picked it on Arabia. From there, it's pretty much free win with Delhi. I think he has... Uh, I mean, he has played with what he had, right? He didn't have, like, a better sip. And Rus, if, if you manage to... Um, like, if somehow you play a mind trick on the Delhi or something and he sees knights and then he's, uh, he takes, the like, the sacred places a bit late, then maybe you can actually make, like, fast castle, as he was doing, and actually manage to do some damage. But I was scouting very well what he was doing all the time. So I thought if I just get three fast secrets, there's no way he, he will punish. Yeah, that was, that was exactly what we expected. And in that last game, you were playing English up against his Mongols. I think both Nili and I were very surprised to see the Mongols come out in that situation. Did you feel that coming into this series that you outdrafted your opponent, that you had better sieves, better matches or better maps for yourself? Yeah, I think so. I, I think the last one is kind of tricky. I think, I mean, I think if you want to play Mongols, you should play it on a land map because it's pretty much a free win. And Mongolian hates it should be a really good ship as well. But, uh, you know, just with how the map is, some weird things happen sometimes. So I think it's, it was a bit of a risk. But the other two wins I had were uh, matchup wins, I think. And even the one I lost, I think I should have won because I think the matchup was also favorable for me. So, yeah, I think the draft really had a lot to do with this. Okay, well, congratulations. You head into day number three at one and one. So not bad. You started off a bit shaky, but you worked your way up. So once again, congratulations. Yeah, I look forward to you. seeing how you do tomorrow. Fellas, don't go anywhere. We're going to have plenty more action for you guys. The, I hear the next game in particular, or next set in particular, is going to be absolutely amazing. So I'm going to hopefully throw it over to some highlights for you guys and uh, keep you guys entertained while we get the next players set up.